Okay, guys, what is EWJ? Now, first of all, I just want to say, I did mention it was our most popular product. It is. To be honest, in the first two weeks of when we opened the enrollment, over half of our slots have already been signed up for. It really is something that's truly, truly unique. And where did this idea come from? I want to take you to, gosh, to, it's maple right now. So it's two years ago. Two years ago, I was talking to every single one of my parents. I needed feedback. I wanted to make the curriculum better. I wanted to roll out new products for the summer that was innovative, that was different from what you might see at other writing camps and other programs. And this conversation kept happening. This conversation kept happening. The parent would say, how can my children improve their writing skills? I know it's a, it's not, it's not, it's not a, a generic question at all, but a very valid one if you're going to a writing center. Okay, how can my children improve their writing skills? And I'm like, well, obviously you just read and write every day, right? I mean, how many times have you said that? I mean, for all the parents on this call, and for all the kids who are here, sorry that you're here on your Friday night. Thank you so much, but. I mean, how many, how many, how many parents have been like, oh my God, just please read and write a little bit every day, a little bit, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's how you get better. That's how you get better. Because the thing is, when you take my class and you just do anything the rest of the week, it's going to be pretty hard to get better. That's how I felt about the piano. All right. And then I'm like, and they're like, okay, well, if you're reading and writing every day, what should they be reading? And I'm like, okay, um, I give them all my book lists. I give them uh, different newspapers. I'm like, read your classic books, newspapers, magazines. For example, um, please read the New York Times, the, uh, my favorite, the uh, Wall Street Journal. I used to read that every day, still do. Um, the Atlantic, The Economist, The New Yorker, um, a bunch of different periodicals, right? That is how you get better. And all the parents are writing this down. In fact, some of you may be writing this down right now. So let me repeat it for you. New York Times, Wall Street Journal, uh, let's put WAPO in it, Washington Post, okay? The Atlantic, The Economist, The New Yorker. All right. So then they're like, okay, all right, got it, got it. What should they be writing every day? And I thought to myself, you know what? They should be writing anything that's related to their reading. They should be responding to it through an op-ed. Maybe they want to write a news article too, using a hard lead. And I'll tell you why I'm like obsessed with the concept of the hard lead later on. Um, maybe they want to write like, you know, a poem, whatever. Okay. And the parents go, you know, this is all fair. This is all fair. But who is going to check it and give them feedback, right? I mean, think about it. How many times, like, you know, for all the kids out there who really don't like to write, okay. and then being <laughs> forced to, you're like being forced practically to write in your diary, right? And you're like, why would I write in my diary? No one's going to read it. This is completely meaningless. Well, I was like, yeah, you know what? They're right. You got me. Who's going to check the writing and give them feedback? And that was how I woke up one morning and was like, kids are going to read, or adults, whatever, you guys are going to read and write every single day, and you're going to receive feedback on it from our editors. And then, because we're doing it on a daily basis, we're then going to publish it onto ewcjournal.com. All right. So we're going to walk through the entire workflow of that because you know what? You know why this is hard? You know why this is unique? Because the logistics are so hard in the back. The logistics are so hard and we've managed to perfect that. So I can't wait to show it to you. I can't wait to walk you through that. But that is where the idea of EWJ came about. All right. So this is the dialogue. This is the dialogue that basically made me decide upon the EWJ program or discover, conceive of the idea of EWJ two years ago. Now, when I think about the mission, when I think, I'm a very mission, 
mission-driven person, okay? When I think about the mission of EWJ, I look back to what a journal is, all right? There are two definitions of a journal. One is like the Wall Street Journal, right? It's a periodical that deals with matters of current interest, current interest. And number two, it's like a diary, right? Something that you're doing and writing in on a daily basis. That's why the EWC Journal has these three mission statements. Number one, I want you to form a positive habit, a positive habit of reading the newspaper every single day. Guys, this isn't for school. This isn't to get your parents off your back. Joanna, what do you do every single morning from 8.30 to 9.30? Uh, I, I read um, news. Yeah. You read the news out loud, actually, I right? You are literally loud. reading the news out loud. That's right. And when I was, um, when I was um, um, working at my hedge fund, what do you think I had to do every single morning? Okay, granted, I didn't read like international news. Well, depends on the international news, but you know, my focus was on business news, right? That was my main focus. So I would read the Wall Street Journal every single morning. Guys, this is a habit that needs to stick with you throughout your entire life. That is how you become an informed citizen, all right? Number two, we want to provide individual and personalized feedback on your work. That is super, super important. Jessica actually mentioned something earlier that she, had, she brought up recently and I was like, that's a brilliant way of putting it. Right now, feedback is a luxury product. It's a luxury product. It's not like math. It's not like STEM, right? I'm looking at the names of the people on, in, this, um, in, in this webinar right now. Chances are you get STEM. <laughs> you get math. You get the importance of science. But the thing is, like, you, know, you, know, you, you could do problem sets. You can make yourself better. You can't do problem sets when it comes to writing because somebody needs to check your work. That's why it's so hard and frankly, really expensive to get that individual attention through writing, okay? So it's a luxury product now. If you wanna find a good editor, it's hundreds of dollars per hour for a, like a quality tutor, okay? So that's the second thing. The third thing is guys, <laughs> I know this is like, this is like me getting like all philosophical, but I, I want you to be informed citizens of this world, okay? I want you to not just read your news through BuzzFeed. I'm guilty as anyone of like going through BuzzFeed quizzes, all right? But if that is the only place where you get your news, if Instagram is the only place where you get your news, you're going to be susceptible to any sort of media without thinking about it, without filtering that information and thinking critically. And you guys are the future, right? Please help us. You guys are the future. So that is the reason why I want you to think critically around about the world around you. And that is really the mission of EWC. I am going to spend this time to go through logistics. I'm going to go through what the sec uh, section assignments are. What is a group? How do you access your reading? That was one of the questions in the QLA. How do you access your reading? How do you sign up for your article? I'm going to go through that. I'm going to go through the portal. Now, first of all, let's talk group. The other thing um, that day, two years ago, when I woke up and came up with EWJ, I wanted people to, yes, write news articles, but across different categories. That was something that was also very, very important. First of all, you're gonna ask yourself something. Jane, why don't you just give a daily prompt? Why do you make people write a news article every day? I'm gonna tell you this. I really think about my own development as a writer. Okay, number one, when you are reading a newspaper, it's hard. It's not easy. It really isn't. I actually remember the first newspaper article I ever read. It was in it was the New York Times. Um, I'm gonna say something kind of ridiculous. And 
I, I, I feel preemptively bad for like, a, like students in the audience, but I read my first New York Times article when I was nine years old. And I remember this, it was in 1999. And it was when the US women's soccer team won the World Cup for the second time ever. And I remember that headline so clearly. And I also remember, I thought I was a really good reader. Yeah, I wasn't. It took me like two hours to go through that article and I underlined every single word and I was like, I have to understand every single thing about these awesome women, but I can't understand it. But it was this, it was this training that basically helped me become a much more effective writer. Think about it from a math and STEM standpoint first, okay? You always like, you know, okay, maybe not always. I definitely didn't. But you know how sometimes you would do like math contests, like AMC questions, really, really hard questions. And, you know, there are only 10 of them. And if you get two right, it's like you should throw yourself a party because, you know, all the regular math questions would seem so much easier afterwards. This is the same thing, right? This is the same thing. But nobody would ever think about that. We don't think about that from a reading perspective. The only way to get better is if you struggle. So I want you to struggle. You're not supposed to be perfect. You're not supposed to like write 100% of the articles. You're supposed to do your best, okay? Actually, most of our students don't do all the articles. I'm gonna tell you right now, most of our students don't actually complete all of the articles, but they try your best. And by trying, that's how you get better because that's the whole point. We just wanna get better, right? So why news? So I already told you from the reading perspective, let me talk to you about from the writing perspective. I actually ran um, the Trinity time. So I went to Trinity school in, um, on the Upper West Side in New York City and I ran their uh, school newspaper. I found that learning the ins and outs of journalism, what a hard lead is, for example, the inverted pyramid, is extremely important to developing yourself as a writer and as a thinker. Let me tell you why. One of the main issues that I have with students writing, and I've been doing this for a very long time, uh, is that you guys talk too much. <laughs> Basically, when you can't figure out what you say, you start like, word vomiting. And there's like super redundant. There are words that don't need to be there. When's the last time you picked a newspaper article and the first paragraph is like word vomit? The answer is never because the rule in newspaper writing is that the first paragraph has to be 45 words. So you can't use words like like and so, okay? You have to get to the point in 45 words. That's why, that's why I try I think newspaper writing is extremely, extremely important, okay? So you have to do word count to be concise. That's the first thing. The second thing is a newspaper is not a five paragraph, um, like five paragraph essay or whatever you guys are learning a score. Maybe you're not learning about five paragraph essays, in which case switch schools or take one of my classes or something. Okay, in newspapers, it goes by priority of importance, okay? It forces you to think about every single fact and the most important thing goes first. So you're literally prioritizing your research. That's why it's so interesting to actually write a newspaper article. Okay, that was a very long tangent to like section assignments, but it was important for everybody to know like my educational pedagogy, okay? so. Everybody has to write a different category every day so that on the Monday of week one, we're going to have news, creative writing, and science and technology articles all on one day. Don't forget, you guys are staff writers for a publication, okay? So we need fresh articles across every single category, which is news, science and technology, sports, arts, and creative writing. All right. The last one is called On the Fits. What is on the fits? Well, this is recommended for our younger staff writers. Um, why is it called on the fits? It's because the first editor of EWJ, the girl who um, came up with um, came up with EW, came up with EWJ with me. Uh, she she had a she had a puppy named Fitz. 
so it's called on the fits. But for those of you who are wondering whether you should be in on the fits or regular EWJ, take our placement test, all right? Take our placement test. If you're in levels one to two, generally speaking, you're probably on the fits. If you're in three, four, five, you can go to the older one. Those in level three to four, you're gonna struggle, okay? You're, you're definitely gonna struggle a bit, but you can do it. Like, I know my kids in three and four right now because I'm teaching all the classes. You guys can do it, okay? So um, Joe, can you actually drop the placement link in the chat so that everybody has it? Wonderful, thank you. And I'm going to um, add a couple of more pieces of information on this slide, which is the fact that news counts as what's going on today, all right? What's going on today? This will become relevant when it comes to like finding what headline you guys are going to write about. So news is what's going on today. Science and technology, sports and arts are considered feature articles, right? Because it doesn't have to be something that happened like today. More sanctions against Russia because of Ukraine today. Okay, so that is uh, science, sports, science and tech, sports, arts, and then you have a creative writing day. Now, when you are looking at a feature, so one of those three categories, you have the option of writing a hard news article, a soft news article, or an op-ed. Okay, these are things that we go over in the orientation. I'm going to touch on what that is in just a little bit by showing you the whale, but that is the idea for those three categories. You have three different structures that you can follow. And of course, I go through with you an orientation day and I also provide a bunch of on-demand videos. All right, so that is really, really going to help you out. For creative, for the creative piece, we give prompts, all right? But it is meant to be creative, so. We're not gonna tell you exactly what to write, but we will give you like a push for those of you like me who are not that creative, okay? So guys, I am now going to take you uh, through a very colorful and very confusing workflow of how everything operates, okay? Let's say you are a sophomore in high school, and you have been placed in group one. So let's go back to the previous slide. How do I go back to the previous slide? Previous slide. So let's say group one Monday, you're writing news, right? And then Tuesday, you're writing science and technology. Okay. So you are placed in group one. Now on a Sunday, the Sunday before the first Monday, we release feature headlines. What's a feature again? Um, science and tech, sports, arts, okay. You will receive feature headlines that you then sign up for. So that way, not everybody writes about the exact same thing. So I remember the first summer, people would like wait till, you know, till I think it was like whenever it was released, 8 p.m. on Sunday or something like that, whenever the email goes out and everybody is like rushing onto there to like register for the article that they want to write about. Well, there you go. You sign up for your feature headline, but that's not where you're going to write about on Monday, right? On Monday, you are writing news. So you actually look at the news headlines for that particular day. Now, we use the New York Times. That's my, it's not my favorite, but um, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. So New York Times. Okay, so she picks the headline that she wants to write for that particular day. And because it's a news article that day, it has to be hard news. It can't be an op-ed. It can't be a soft news article. And then you submit draft one. Now on Tuesday, right? Tuesday, the next day, you're doing a science and technology article, which you already signed up for on Sunday. So you already know what you're going to do. Okay, so you could do hard, soft, or op-ed. She's chosen to write a soft news article. Wonderful. So she submits draft one on Tuesday. And then you're like, hey, what happens to my first draft, right? For both news and my science and technology articles. Well, 
The editors on our end, we get notified of the fact that you submitted it. And so they have about 48 hours, give or take. Okay. Might be sooner, might be not really later, to be honest, is generally within the 48 hour window. They're going to send back revisions to the student. All right. Or if it's actually really, really good and perfect, then we might just send it straight to publication. But generally there's like one round of edit. All right. So your articles go to uh, go to the editors. They, they return to you revision one. The student gets notified of revision one and they have 24 hours to fix it a little bit and then send draft two back to the editor. And that is the final, all right? That is basically the final edit that gets published onto ewcjournal.com. There's a cherry there as a reward. I don't know why, I just, I like cherries, okay? So some par many parents actually ask me, well, Jane, like, you know, how, what standard, you know, at, at, at what point, how do you determine whether an article gets published or not? I'm going to say we do our very, very best to get all our articles published. That's something that's very important to us because we want the confidence. We want the confidence in the students to see their work published and shared. There's a kid here. Is he is it actually, Joe, I don't know if he's in the participants right now. But here's a kid who is signed up for EWJ for his third summer, third summer. You go, Kevin. All right. But the reason when he first started, you know how he first started. He was just like, I don't want to do this. You know, kind of like how some of you might be feeling right now. But the thing is, even if he didn't want to write, he loved sharing his work. He would check constantly to see whether his work was published. And by forming that little habit, that's how he became better. And now in school, he's like, oh yeah, writing, this is, this is nothing. Because you know what? I wrote like every day over the summer. <laughs> and people liked it. So what up, right? So that is how it works. And I hope that is like helpful for you to visualize now, what's missing here? There is no live class, okay? You are doing this independently. So is it for everybody? No, it's not. The last thing I want you to do is to spend a bunch of money and then you don't turn in a single assignment. We don't want that either, okay? We'll keep bothering you about it. Don't you worry, we'll keep bothering you about it, but you need to do it. You, it's, it's really, really good for you, even if it sucks in the beginning. We're actually going to read an article called The Writer's Path later on. Um, it's, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Um, but that is how it works. And now I'm going to talk about the readings, which was in the Q&A. And this is actually a good time to bring up the EWJ portal. We're going to talk about how and we're going to talk about how to sign up for an article and how to access a reading. It's honestly pretty straightforward, okay, once you buy the product. So when you buy the product, oh, this is our placement test. Here's the placement test. <laughs> Joanna, you know what I'm about to say. A or B. A or B. Not A and B. If you take A and B, you will be confused as to what level you belong to. All right, that's, that's my speech there. Once you purchase the EWJ product, you will be taken here. You automatically like have access to this, you click on it. Um, I need to update this material. Give me some time, it will be updated. Um, but what you can see is that we provide, yes, like a bunch of like orientation videos, um, logistic videos. Uh, we have a bunch of resources on current events, hard news, soft news. So for those of you who have access to it right now, and many of you actually do, all of these are going to be redone because your lovely instructor, Jane, is going to redo all of it. That's right. I care about you guys. All right. So I'm going to redo all of that. But Let's look at the weekly logs. What is a weekly log? So first of all, let's go to week one, all right? 
this is where you get to sign up for your say science and technology headlines, sports headline. You can say hello here. Like this is editable, editable, editable. This can be edited. All right. So you have your um, week one feature articles here. You then have something called the Midnight Espresso. The Midnight Espresso is basically the news headlines that you are going to be writing about for your hard news, for your hard news, that daily news. Well, this is where we basically drop the link of the New York Times article and you get to choose which headline you want to write about. Um, why is it called the Midnight Espresso? Because <laughs> this program really tires out, <laughs> really tires out the editors too, but like we love it. So that's why we do it. And we also read news like every single day. So that's why we always release the news headlines at like midnight. So they'll be ready for you the next day. This is how much we care. So I remember like um, Emerson, the, the girl who worked on it with me um, in the beginning, I keep saying girl, like she's amazing um she's she's not a girl um the woman who worked on it with me uh the first summer she's like i keep doing this at midnight so i can get like fresh headlines this i need an espresso Bing! midnight espresso okay so that is the weekly log and just to show you what that fr first summer looked like the idea is that the headlines are going to be here. Everybody is like scrambling to type, you know, their names to sign up for specific um, articles. So you can see group one, right, on Monday, they're writing news. So they're like signing up for specific hard news articles and so on and so forth, okay? Um, now, how, how do you access your readings? So readings, let's say you're writing about sports, you click on this icon, which will redirect you to a Google Drive, okay? And in that folder, well, we, we didn't have this lovely portal in the past. We had it all on Google Classroom. So let me find, oh, let's say science and technology, okay? So the science and technology folder, it's very organized. This also used to be six weeks, so sorry, guys. Um, so then you will see a bunch of PDFs here. And you're like, okay, artificial uh, lights tell the story of the pandemic, right? So I really hope that if I go here and I go here, you'll be like, artificial lights tell the story of a pandemic. Go figure, okay? So you read this article and you're like, this is from the magazine Science for everybody who's wondering what where articles comes from. It comes from like reputable magazines and periodicals, whatever we like. Um, and you're like, oh, Artificial lights tell the story of the pandemic. Satellite views of Earth at night reveal the distinct imprint of humankind's response to a fast spreading virus. Oh, this is from the Atlantic. Actually, this is from the Atlantic. And then I'm like, oh, wow, this is an incredibly boring article. I don't wanna write about this. Let's write about this. Stars aren't supposed to go out like this. This, see, a star has gone missing. This is interesting. This is also the start of a soft lead. Um, and then I would be like, you know what, stars are not supposed to go out like this. So then I would put my name here, Jane Chen. That's how you sign up for it, okay? So this has been the system. And do the younger students read the same articles as the older students? Do you think I will ever let a seven and a half year old read the same article as a 17 year old? No, no. So um, we have a separate submission process for on the fits, okay? So let's just take a on the fits right now. Um, and I'm like, okay, let's take a look at this. This is from Smithsonian, okay? The Smithsonian. So no, we don't use time for kids only. We use whatever we, whatever is reputable. Meet the illustrator who brought children's books to life. Isn't that cute? All right, but the point's been made, all right? This is how you access your readings. Um, I don't know what a New York Times subscription is, but it's not expensive. That's on you. You do have to get that. If you have a young kid, nothing's on you, uh, right? Yeah, I don't think, yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, we, we provide everything. <laughs> we literally provide all the readings, okay? So that is that. Did I go over all the readings? Yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Oh, 
There is one caveat. No, no, that's, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, basically, <laughs> the reason why I say this, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to promise. I don't want to promise anyone, but uh, we are actually hiring a software developer um, to make an in-house software to make all of your like submission processes. Like you saw the workflow workflow earlier to make the submission process and like article sign up easier. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. We had an incredible, incredible enrollment for EWJ. It blew, it absolutely blew our mind. Half of the seats are already gone. Okay, well, no, over half of the seats are already gone. And so what do we do with the money? We reinvested it in you guys, all right? So that you could have a wonderful and seamless experience. That's how much we care. All right, so there is a chance that it's not really going to be this portal, but you guys get the idea. This is how it works. All right, Joe, did I miss anything there? Uh, uh, no, no, we're good. Yeah. Okay, awesome. If there are any questions regarding workflow, um, ask us. Ask us, type it in the chat, type it in the Q&A. And I will definitely get to it um, at the end of the presentation. But right now, I want to get to the whale. Why did we call it the whale? It's called the whale because it's gigantic. <laughs> it's gigantic. It's a gigantic resource for you guys to learn how to write a hard news article, a soft news article an op-ed, okay? And then I give you tips on your creative writing because I don't want to like, you know, put you in a box. I already put you in a box like for most of the week. One week, you don't get to be put in a box. But the idea is that this is what I'm going to be going over orientation day. We literally walk you through every single step. I'm going to show you an example in just a little bit. But we go through like how to write a headline, Okay, what's a good headline? What's a bad headline? A bad headline is whenever you ramble. A good headline is no more than 10 words. Once again, that's why we do news articles. It's about being concise, concise, concise. Okay, so that's your current events. And then you have art. So you can do a critical review. You can do a career retrospective. And then you, of course, walk through an op-ed with me. What is the lead of an op-ed? A lead of an op-ed is going to be different than the lead of a hard, like of a hard news article, of a hard lead, right? Because we want to hook you in. So how do we hook you in? Well, that is the structure of an op-ed, all right? So all of that we go through in the whale. Um, I'm going to actually show you a bit of the whale in just a bit, in just a little bit. But in addition to the whale, because we love you guys so much, we also give you something called guardrails. Guardrails is basically writing step by step, step by step. On orientation day, we're going to read the article Aunt Jemima's brand to change name and image over racial stereotype, all right? And literally, we're going to like type it out together. Okay, you're gonna watch me type it out. But step one, you read the story and you read the source. You figure out your five Ws, okay? Very clear. Number two, it's time to write the lead, okay? So it should be one to two sentences at most, Charlotte, sample student, is ready to write her lead. Thanks to her great note-taking note -taking skills, it's easy. She writes the following lead. Last Wednesday, da, 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 da. We wrote this, right? So literally, we're like holding your hands through this together, all right? Now, let me just show you um, what it looks like, all right? Uh... The whale, this is the whale, it's massive, that's why it's called the whale, but you can see we go through hard, soft, op-ed, and source requirements. Oh, for all of you who plan to plagiarize, don't. We'll know. There are plagiarism checkers out there. Come on, all right? So 
don't do it guys. All right. So this is the whale. It's massive. We go through it. It's going to be a very exhausting day for me. That's okay. Cause I love you guys. And then you have your step-by-step. -step. So step one, your five W's, find your quotes. This is your lead, your body. Da -da 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 -da. How do you quote here? Right. How do you write your headline? We go through all of it together. So that is orientation day. And there is so much material that I can't get through all of it in orientation day. So that's why we have on-demand videos because there's just like so much material. All right, there you go. So now let's talk about getting y'all published because that's what's up, right? If you're writing, if you're communicating, you, you, you want to tell somebody something. So it's really, really important to be validated, to see your work out there in the World Wide Web. And we're trying to help. We're trying to help, right? You're probably wondering, okay, wow, this is all really complicated. Like there's a lot of things going on. How do you keep organized? Great question. In the beginning, we found out the hard way and then we got smart about it. So we got a project management system to help. <laughs> All right, so we've got the student tracker on the left. We know where every single article, it used to be six weeks, you guys are eight weeks, eight weeks. <laughs> All right, so we can see where everybody is in the stages before they get published, okay? And if it's ready for publish and not published, we also know that. We also know that because we, are also quality controlling and quality checking what the instructor, what the editors are doing. Okay. So when you have a feedback given, that means you know you submit it, like we've sent you a revision. It's not good enough to get published. We need to get it back. We remind you guys, we actually have a notification system in our project management. So we know if you're missing two, three, four, or five pieces in a week and an email does get sent out to you. All right. So we really do try our very, very best to make sure all of you guys are on the same page and just benefiting from this program. Because if you get the full benefits from this program, it's, it's really, really amazing. Okay. Let us read the writer's path. I swear on my life that I did not make Frank write this, all right? Actually, it was Sadie who ran EWJ last year and she's actually running it again this year. Did you know that, Joe? Sadie is back. Sadie is running EWJ this year, yeah. Um, so we have a veteran coming back. Um, but <laughs> Sadie sent this to me and she's like, Jane, you've got to read this. So let's read about a writer's path. Before starting the EWJ program, I thought writing was words on paper. Words were like the dots and lines of a toddler's art. Occasionally, I would add some fancy words to, uh, to seem intelligent, like adding circles and stars to a toddler's art. Time would also seem to zoom by, and my brain would beg me to make some unformed thoughts into a paragraph. You know how I feel about unformed, right? I don't feel good about it. On the first day, I knew I could not write a mediocre essay to my editor. It would be like serving raw food to Gordon Ramsay a famous chef who rages a lot. For those of you who don't know who Gordon Ramsay is, like hop off this orientation and start YouTubing him. He's hilarious. Please don't leave. Okay, he's hilarious. Do it after this orientation. I analyzed the writing style and structure of the examples that EWJ provided. I was like a cook, finding key ingredients and techniques in a recipe. I pictured a logical progression of my essay as a cook would picture their final dish. And I finished with a well-cooked steak with poor seasoning and plating. Surprisingly, my food was not thrown or spit at me. Instead, I felt like my feedback was a chef helping a chef. The following days, I found a base structure for different categories of writing. I found cooking tools that I liked when challenged with different ingredients. Each day I would go back and try to create the same dish, but with my editor's tips. Then I applied ideas that I previously learned on a similar dish with different flavors. As the final day comes near, the tensions in my brain relax more. Writing five days a week for six weeks, 
is an experience that can feel like banging your head against the wall. Some dishes I create make my brain feel strained like a dried raisin, hesitant with each action. Some dishes I finish makes my heart feel, uh, heart feel warmer and increase my willingness to put parts of myself in my dishes. I cut and burn myself, but I will patch them up and return to the kitchen. Oh my God, that is so, so sweet. That's so sweet. I read this and I think I like cried. <laughs> I cried a little, but it really is, I hope, a rewarding, rewarding experience. I actually do want to show you guys something um, before I um, wrap up for questions. But this is a sample student tracker, okay? We care about our students. Like this is meant to be a product that is very, very reasonably priced. But if you follow the guidelines we give you, we'll give you the maximum output, all right? And so we do track. We do give you our tracker. And we give you the feedback week to week. Your editors will be able to recognize the mistakes that you keep making. And we don't want you to keep making those mistakes. So we give you a little bit every single week and we really want to see you evolve. We want to see you grow and we know that you will. Okay, so that guys, that is EWJ.